Now we're looking at the practice problems, and I want to work the first three out. Number one on the practice problem here. 643 centimeters, and it wants to know how many feet. Okay. 643 centimeters, and it wants to know how many feet. So, again, how do we start this? Write down what we know. Very good. So 643, do your bracket. Is this going to be more than one step? Yeah, it'll be more than one, because we have metric to English. Okay, so it'll be at least one, more than one step. What do I do at the centimeters? Slide. Slide it, very good. Get it out of there. And what do I want to change the centimeters into, or convert it into? Inches. Inches. I want to use what I got. Okay, so there's my conversion, and I gave that to you as well. So inches, 2.54, okay. We don't have what we're looking for yet, so what do I do now? Slide the inches. Slide the inches. And go feet. And which one's bigger, foot or an inch? Foot, there's 12 inches, so they're gone. We have what we're looking for, so we can put an equal sign on that. What's that? And hopefully you guys are 21.1 or 21.09580052 is what my calculator says. Now the way that I put this in on my calculator, 643 times 1 times 1 divided by, open the parentheses, 2.54 times 12, close the parentheses equals now. Can anybody tell me why I'm using the parentheses? I haven't asked that. Show that you have to do that first. Or, no, yeah, you have to multiply first. So the calculator multiplies those two together first. Good. What if I did this? Is it wrong if I did this? I mean, is it illegal math if I did that? No, it would divide 643 by 2. It would give an answer, and then that 12 actually would act like it were on top. So order of operation helps us to multiply these guys first, so that when we have our number on top and we divide it, we're golden. So it should give you around 21.0958. Okay. Rounding it to 21.1. Okay. Feeling a little better about this? 5.0. Times 10 to the 7, what is that, milligrams? Yeah. Is that milli or micro? Milli, okay. And that's wanting to know how many LBS. Bless you. Okay. So, what do we start with? Start with what we know. So we, even though this is in scientific notation, some of you are like, oh man, what's he doing that to us for? Well, this is actually a small number compared to what we're going to be using later on in the year. So make sure that you know how to use scientific notation on your calculator. Because you're not going to want, if it's times 10 to the 23rd, you're not going to want to punch in 22 zeros. Trust me, your calculator won't let you do that. So knowing how to do it in scientific notation is really nice. All right, so we're going to write what we know for sure. And can I convert milligrams to pounds? What do I need to convert it to? Grams. Grams, very good. And there's our unit there, and that was given to you. So slide milligrams and put grams on top. Which one's bigger, gram or milligram? Gram. gram. How many milligrams in a gram? 10 to the what? So here's 10 to the 0, milli's here, 10 to the negative 3. So how many times do I move to decimal? Three times. Good. So 10 to the 3 is 1,000. If you want to do scientific notation or 1,000, that's fine. So our milligrams are gone. Now what do I do? Slide. Slide it. So move that gram down. Do we have a conversion from grams to pounds? Yep. Yeah. yeah, babe. Put her on top. Which one's bigger? Pound. Pound. 454 grams per pound. And we have what we're looking for, so we can put our equal sign on there. Let's do some calculating. 
And some of you may even weigh 5.00 times 10 to 7 milligrams. Yeah. So 5 e 7 divided by, open up, 1 e 3 times 454. Anybody get a number? 110. Very good. And that's pounds. I did. <laughs> My calculator actually says 110.1321586. Don't write all that down. Okay. Um, another way to type this in, again, if you're going old school, uh, 5 times 10 carat 7 divided by 1 times 10 carat. Does everybody know what I mean when I say carat? Yeah. Okay. It's a power button, or it's not a times 10, but it's a exponent button. Some, some are like this, buttons, or this, I don't know, depends. Yeah, it's something I really like. It just does that. That's nice. Okay. All right, everybody good there? Let's look at the next one. Somebody last there said I, it was impossible to do this. Oh, man. 25.3 micrograms, is that right? Yeah. Per minute. And it wants to know how many pounds per week. Okay. What the heck? It's a rate. It's a rate problem. Okay. Oh boy. There's two units on there. Uh -oh. How do we start? How do we start? Write down what we know. Yeah, yeah, you gotta start with what we know. You can't just start making them dance right off the bat. You gotta, you gotta start with what you know. Alright, now, I will warn you. Pick one unit, convert it all the way through before you try doing the other one. In other words, if you want to convert the minutes to weeks first, good idea. Or if you want to convert the milligrams to pounds, good idea. Don't try to do milligrams and pounds at the same, I'm sorry, milligrams and minutes, micrograms and minutes at the same time. It won't work. Okay. So what do you guys want to do first? Micrograms to pounds or minutes to weeks? Micro. I heard micro first, so that's what we're doing. Okay. And it doesn't matter which one you do. Okay. If it's not the unit we're looking for, slide it. Very good. So we're going to move diagonally. That's why I don't say slide it down or slide it up, because we want to move it diagonally. So we're going to put the microgram down here. Okay. We're not even going to look at the minutes for right now. Cover that up. Ignore it. Don't even, don't erase it, but don't. Just ignore it. Um, is there a conversion from micro to pounds? No, so we need to change this to what? Grams. Grams, very good. Which one's bigger? And how many micrograms in a gram? So gram is here, micro is here, so we move it six times, very good. Excellent. So six, so whoa, make a nicer six. Yeah. Bless you, I think. Micrograms are gone. Is there, what do we do with the grams? Slide it. Okay. And what goes on top? Pounds. Very good. That's our conversion. So grams are gone. There's 454 grams in a pound. We have our first unit. I like to circle when I get to a benchmark, so to speak. So I know I'm going to pounds. I got to pounds. So I'm done. I'm not going to do anything else with mass. Okay. Now I'm ready to start with minutes. Where can I put minutes so that I can cancel out that unit? On the top. On the top. Very good. So again, we're sliding it diagonally, so we're moving it up. So we'll put minutes right here. Do we have a conversion from minutes to weeks? No. Not that I'm aware of, and I don't want you to find one. So convert minutes to hour. Yeah, that's a good one. And in one hour, there are 60 minutes. So minutes are gone. Again, ooh. 
They're diagonal from each other. Right. Yeah, right small. Okay. So what do I do with this hour? Slide it. What can I put below hour? Days. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. That I can do in my head. So in one day there's 24 hours. So hours are gone. Now what? Now we go to week. Now we go to week. So day moves up. And again, make sure you're showing your units so you know how to move them correctly. Because it gets ugly quick if you're not showing your units. And a week, there's seven days. We have our second unit. We can now put our equal sign on there. Look at all that. Isn't that awesome? That's a problem. <laughs> all right, before I type it in, I'll write it down. Or somebody tell me, how, how would you type it in? That would be a good start. Times 60. Times 60, yep, yeah, skip all those ones. Times 24. Good. Times 7. Divided by? Open the parenthesis. Very good. Uh, 10 to the 6. 10 to the 6. How do I write that so in my calculator? E, E. Okay, go 1, E, E, or EXP, or 1 times 10 carat. Whatever you do, don't do this. 1 times 10 E, E. That's bad. Don't ever do that. That makes Mr. Craig sad. Okay? So don't do that. Um, 1 E, E, what did we say? 6? Times what? Times 454. 454. Excellent. Close her up. Now, that's not as fun because you look at all that and think, wow, look at all that stuff. And then it's only that that we're typing in. Uh, we'll go arrow up here. So like point, and my cat, this is what my calculator is saying, so I'll put it in scientific notation in a second here. Two, and that's pounds per week. Which would be better is this. Can I get four? Okay. Anybody get that? Or am I way off the mark? Okay. You got that? All right. All right, so again, circle Roman numeral four. We'll do that tomorrow. Also circle number 10 and number 11. We'll do that tomorrow. We'll do those two in class. So your homework tonight is just 1 through 9. Yeah, 1 through 9. We'll take it out long. Okay. Do we meet tomorrow? An extra day to do it. Awesome. Don't wait, though. All right. Number 4, we have a very interesting problem. It says that we have 100 pounds. Sorry, we're in Indiana. 100 100 pounds per inch squared. And it wants to know how many kilograms per centimeter squared that is. All right. Now, again, we have more than one thing here, but the rules are still the same. We always want to start with what we know. So, what do we know in this problem? There's 100 pounds per inch squared. Okay, so that's what we want to start with. A little longer there. Okay. Would you like to convert the pounds into kilograms first, or do you want to do the inches squared into centimeters squared? First? Pounds? I heard of more pounds. You got to vote. But it doesn't matter which one you do first, which is nice. All right. So the conversion that we have is that we have one pound equals 454 grams. So that's where we need to go. So if we start with pounds, what do we need to change the pounds into? Grams, good. So it's not the unit we're looking for. Move it diagonally. So we'll put pounds there. And we do have a conversion from pounds to grams. So we have 454 there, okay? So the pounds are gone. Do we have the unit that we're looking for? Not yet. So we'll... You said no, right? No, I said no. Yeah. So how do I get that? Or can I go from grams to kilograms? Yeah. But first I gotta move the grams diagonally. 
So we do have a metric to metric. Which of these two is greater or larger? Kilogram. Kilogram. Okay. And I don't have my chart up there, but how many grams are in a kilogram? Good. Three. There's a thousand. Okay. So we have our first unit. And again, if you have more than one unit that we need to change to, I would circle it just to let me know, hey, I'm not doing any more with the mass. Okay. Now, if the inch is squared, we're going to centimeter squared. Or should the inches squared go over here? Um, on, top. on top. Again, move it diagonally so we can cancel that. Mm -hmm. However, I'm not going to write the square on there just yet. Okay, I'm going to keep it in the back of my mind. I know I have to square that. But I want to do a linear association or a linear conversion first. It's easier that way. So what is our conversion? What do we want to change that to? Centimeters. Centimeters. Yeah, that's cool because inches go right to centimeters. Okay, so once we have that, and again, don't square that one just yet. I know we need to go to square. Let's do what it is in a linear aspect. So which of these is bigger? Inches. inches. There's one inch, and for every inch, there's 2.54 centimeters, right? Okay. Now that we have the linear association, now let's go and square. So if I put a square on the inch side, I have to square my number. Good news is it doesn't change anything. Same thing with the centimeters. Since I have inches squared, I need centimeters squared, so I also need to square the value. Okay. Do I have my second unit? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I can. That's too long of a line. I apologize. But okay. So the inches cancel out for inches squared cancel out, and now we get to calculate. Okay. The way I would type this in on my calculator would be 100 times 454, and then 1 times 1 squared is still 1, so let's go right to the division. And then on the bottom, um, we have 1,000, however you want to input that in. Again, if you're doing the, the times 10 button, the EXP, whatever, however you can type in 1,000, 1 with three zeros would be fine as well, uh, times 2.54, and do a lot of you have a square button? Yeah. Okay, and if you don't, you can use the carrot button. If you do that, then put a 2 there. A lot of calculators nowadays have a square button. Okay. Then close the parentheses and equals. Okay. So let's see what my calculator says. And again, the key here is making sure that we're using our parentheses. And if you got the right kind of Casio, it also has a Q button. Uh, 7.037? Yep. Yeah. All right. So, 7 point, we'll say 4. And that again is kilograms per centimeter squared. Okay? Sound good? But the key here was, when I did my inches squared, I did it as a linear relationship first. And even if I have to cube it, which we will do a problem like that, do the linear relationship, then square the unit, then square the value. Or cube the unit, and then cube the value. Okay? Good. Did everybody get this on their calculator? Doing a little better about their calculators today? 